Marvin Whiteley. Uh, I'm an associate professor at the University of Texas at Austin in, uh, the, uh, in uh, the Department of Molecular Genetics and Microbiology. Mainly we work on bacteriology, so I'm a bacterial physiologist uh, trained as a bacterial geneticist. I'm really interested in how bacteria actually interact with each other. Um, actually in disease and maybe just out in nature, just generally. And uh, we've primarily spent a lot of time working on the bacterium called Pseudomonas aeruginosa, which causes disease in cystic fibrosis patients. And we also work on bacteria that cause disease in your mouth and how the bacterial interactions in the mouth impact disease. I didn't know Jason at all, and so UT is a very big place, so where I'm, where I'm a professor. And uh, Jason actually came in and gave a talk in front of a random group of scientists, and we have this meeting that happens on Wednesdays where anyone can come in and talk about anything they want. Jason came in, and his first slide was a picture of skulls and beetles. And I didn't know why you would have this a scientist would be showing this and so then I looked in the and it looked like the skulls that he was making were about five microns wide and so Jason has this really powerful approach of actually constructing uh, really intricate features with uh, proteins and then he was actually looking for collaborators and asking us about what he th what we could actually use his technology for and so that's sort of how the collaboration came about that's where we first met each other so if you actually look in nature, you know, one of the problems with microbiologists is we grow bacteria in test tubes. And we've learned a lot, particularly about biochemistry, by actually doing that. But the big problem has been that bacteria in nature don't grow in LB, and they're not at 10 to the 10th cells per mil, right? Um, and so, or there's not 10 to the 10th cells. And so we're actually really interested in acting, asking questions about how bacteria actually exist in nature, which is in very small population numbers, just a few thousand cells but at high densities. And that's how, that's how Jason's technology has really allowed us to sort of, I think, ask new questions in microbiology. You know, we're really interested in how bacteria interact to cause disease. And there's, there's, a, there's a long history of understanding how bacteria actually interact to cause disease, and that one bacteria may not be virulent, but when another one is around, it may be virulent. But looking at those interactions are actually pretty difficult to do, particularly when you're, a when you're asking how would a thousand cells of a pathogen interact with a thousand cells of a commensal? And Jason's technology actually allows us to do that and actually gives us some spatial re resolution too. So we're actually asking if a thousand cells are 10 microns apart, do they talk to each other? How close do they need to be to actually know the others are around and know what the interaction, how the interaction may affect pathogens? You know, most infections are not a single bug, and it's not one bug causing a disease. We may call it the pathogen, but there's lots of other bugs around generally. And, you know, of course we don't understand everything about E. coli even, right? But still, I think it's time to actually start understanding these interactions between bacteria. And you have to have a place to start. And whether you take a reductionist approach like my lab does, or doing something more metagenomic, like there's a lot of labs doing now, I think is a really important step to try to understand how these interactions impact not only disease, but health in, in, in humans.